Greetings and salutations, Charlton66 here once again with another video. Today's video is a little bit different. Today is my birthday. So it's the birthday bash today for myself. Got uh, We got the birthday cake, homemade birthday cake my wife made for me. We got that. We got our coffee. We got gifts, which I am going to talk about today. Um, the other day is my 57th. So um, anyone out there, 57, on just, today's your birthday. Happy birthday. Today is, is a great day. I woke up and I came downstairs and my wife had baked me a cake because she woke up early in the morning just to do this. For, I didn't even smell it. I don't know why. But made me a cake. Decorations were up, and um, I had some gifts, um, some pretty cool gifts. Uh, my wife knows what I like, and um, along with some personal items that was that I got, she got for me a lot of comic book and music stuff here, which I'm going to go over today, um, share with you guys my birthday, and um, hope everyone's doing well. Happy early Father's Day to all those who are fathers. Um, I know it's tomorrow. I won't do a video tomorrow. So happy early Father's Day. And um, so like I said, I want to share with you guys my birthday gifts that my wife got for me. And um, my best friend sent me an Amazon. Him and his wife sent me an Amazon gift card which I'm going to use right after these, uh, this video is over with. All right, on to the gifts. Um, this is my wife got me this awesome poster. And this is what it looks like right here. Back in the Halcyon days when DC was DC, all the great characters um, and villains. We saw Mr. Mixius Pitlick there. This is a pretty big poster. It's 34 by 22.375. So it's a big poster. Um, whatever. Uh, it's a pretty big poster. So I'm going to have to find a place to put it around the room somewhere. Very happy to see that. Um, she also got me... The, um, the Adventures of Smiling Jack cereal, which I'm very looking, very much looking forward to watching this tonight. Love me, Smiling Jack. Got 13, of course, 13 thrilled blasted chapters, it says. I never heard of Tom Brown, but he's playing Smiling Jack. Sands the mustache. Smiling Jack. Did not have a mustache, and then he had a mustache, or vice versa. I think he got the mustache later on. Um, this is very cool. It's coming out of the package. Um, the Maximilian, um, an Instagrammer, told me about this, and I put it on my Amazon watch list. And my wife, of course, saw it and got it for me with the Maximilian with the accessories. Um, I'll take it out of the package now. But it's got those stupid wires that hold the legs and waist and the head and everything. So I don't want to take up everyone's time by doing that. But again, Maximilian, very cool uh, designed robot, of course, from um, the great film The Black Hole, uh, which was a childhood favorite. I remember seeing that at the theater. I also got the soundtrack on record. Some great music, um, not just this one, but I got some other stuff. The Alboli Collection from 1927 to 1941. Um, Alboli, great vocalist. Um, Ray Noble, uh, was he sang with Ray Noble's orchestra. That's what he's really known for, for a lot of his music. Um, he was killed as a parachute bomb, I guess. He was about at a window. And the Nazis, when they raided London, they dropped a bomb that was on a parachute. It was right by a window. And it blew up and killed him. 
But if you, everyone knows Al Bowley, even though they don't know they know Al Bowley, anyone who's seen The Shining at the end, with they show the picture, that song that's playing is Al Bowley and Ray Noble. Or, Ray Noble's or, orchestra is playing on that. So, if you didn't think you knew Al Bowley, you actually do. If you, I'm sure everyone here has seen The Shining at least once. I'm not going to forget about the cake. I'm going to have that as soon as I'm done. Put on a little Al Bowley and have my cake. This is a great book. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I can tell by looking at the insides and what I've read about it. It's going to be a fantastic book called Chart Chartwell Manor, a comics memoir by Glenn Head, who is on Instagram. And that's where I learned about this, this book. Um... R. Chrome, this is, well, okay, I'll say it, a masterpiece, truly. So you get some high accolades from Robert Crumb, you know you're onto something. Um, but it looks like an interesting book. Um, very much underground type of artwork. But it's a comics memoir, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm in the middle of reading some other stuff right now, so I'll probably get to this at some point. Obviously, at some point, I'll, I'll get to it. Um, but yeah, he's on Instagram. Um, follow him up. Got a lot of accolades on this book. I'm really looking forward to it, like I said. And people who, you know, people who watch my videos generally like the same things. Um, but if you have not, any new viewers that have not brought your horizons, please do so with things like that. Your comic enjoyment, I think, will be better for it. Not that to sit there and say, I know everything, or what I like is what everyone else needs to like. It's just, I mean, I've bought books, hardbacks, trade paperbacks, that people say are great and wonderful, and I read it and I can't stand it. Um, but the experience is there, where knowledge is there, why I don't like it, and things that, you know, in your mind of knowing you tried something different, you might not like it. You may have liked it. So it's one of those things. This awesome tome. I'll see you in San Diego. Um, Stan Sakai and Jeff Smith. It's just full of anecdotes and stories and pictures from those wonderful days of early um, San Diego Comic Con. Um, you know, not what it's turned into, but back in those, uh, those good old days. But it's a pretty thick book, as you can see. And it's sectioned off by, like, little tabs um, in the book. But again, it's called uh, See You in San Diego from Fantagraphic. Of course, we know they make great stuff. Um, Oral History of Comic-Con Fandom and the Triumph of Geek Culture. Don't like the geek culture reference, but, you know, what can you do? It is what it is. And Luke Cameron's was an unsleeping dead. Look at that bad boy. IDW, of course, Yo Books. Great stuff. Luke Cameron. You know, what's more to say about him that's not been said? Phenomenal artist. Great stuff in horror. Uh, if you're into comics, this is this is a must-have. Again, not because I say so, because it, it's it's a fact. I mean, classic comic artists are always going to be in vogue, meaning they're going to be referenced by newer by newer artists if they know the trade, if they know what's come before. They're going to reference them in their own work and in stuff that they read, historical stuff. A prime example, uh, if you. If you're if you're on Instagram, you've already have it done. So, um, Butch Weiss, comic book artist that I grew up with, um, he's got an awesome Instagram channel where every day he'll post uh, and does a great write up about the history of comics, a certain artist, or certain writer, or a certain comic in general that has you know uh, brought life you know, to his work or sheds a light on the stuff that we might not know about. And, he, and he'll share that. 
and he'll mention these artists and not just him, but other people who know what they, who know their deal with comic book art and being a comic book artist will reference these guys. And again, you know, uh, IDW does a phenomenal job, Yo Books, by bringing these classic artists to life, back to the forefront. And I wish this kind of happened when they were alive, where the accolades, they would know, they would feel what's going on with them before they, before they pass on. Anyway, that's a great book. Um, on to some music she got from me, Chicago Blues, Essential, Sh Essential Chicago Blues, got a lot of blues guys on here, it's a phenomenal sounding record, I heard some of the songs on here before from all, off of other pressings, but it's nice to have a, um, a little nice, uh, nice little collection like this. And big fan of Depeche Mode, um, a Mental Mori. This is their their deluxe album that she got for me. It's a double record. Um, it's got three sides to it. And um, this is this is their their new record. And I guess like I said, I got some other stuff, some personal stuff that's not really related to comic books or anything like that. Um, but it's been a great birthday. Like I said, the Big Five Seven. I like my birthday. I don't know what it is to me. I like it more than Christmas and anything else. It's just my I always, I always since I was a kid. It's always been a fun time. Um, this I did not get for my birthday, but I'm, this is what I'm currently reading now. Oh, excuse me, my big head's in the way. Is um, desegregating comics, um, debating blackness in the golden age of American comics. This is a pretty good book. Um, it's like a textbook, really. It reads like a textbook. So it's taken me, not that I'm an idiot, but it's taken me a lot longer to get through this than I thought because I'm, I'm really thinking about what they're saying, what they're talking about. Um, the authors in here, done by chapters, by different people. And so you have different aspects. Um not just by one person so you get a feeling of you know different points of view um the mindset um that was prevalent and anyone who's read comic books for any period of time or read anything about history knows the depictions of, of african-american and other other um uh cultures and comic books and this is a nice debate on that on um it's one of those things that, you know, as much as you want to like certain books, certain things pop up. It's really, you know, it's really maddening at, at some point. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good book. I recommend it. It's pretty pricey. I don't know if I did this on the last video or not. I might have done it on Four, on, on Four Color Fossils because it's from um, University, Rutgers University. So it's, it's cost a little bit more than your average average book. But um, it's a good read. It's worth having. If you're into history of comics, if you're into debating certain aspects of comic history, that's a book for you. And Robert E. Howard's Conan, the, it's the um, Complete Weird Tales Omnibus. This is, uh, this is something I picked up. Never, certain Conan stories I like. I've read Conan. Certain stories I really, really like, like the Elephant... Um, the Tower of the Elephant is one of my favorite stories. Um, and uh, have you ever seen a movie called The The Whole Wide World? It's got, uh, what's his name? Vincent D'Onofrio playing Robert E. Howard. A very good movie. I think it's very well done. It's The story's very, very, very good. Um, you know, it doesn't... It talks of his suicide. They actually don't take the time to show it, which I think is very good. It would have been jarring to, to see that happen. Um, but things, you do know about it in the movie. But it's taken from the book of the woman that, that, that it was his girlfriend during his time he was writing Conan when he was living in Texas. And it's taken from her book, a memoir that she wrote. I forgot the name of it. 
but the movie is, is based on her her book. And it's so good. Vincent D'Onofrio, there's a scene where he, and again, thanks to Howler Mouse, um, Tim, who showed me this, uh, this clip from the movie where he describes Conan. She asks him, they're at they're at, they're they're in a, they're in a field or in a in a cornfield and they're parked out the out on the outskirts of it. And they're outside of the car, and she she goes, "Tell me about your Conan character." And he the way he describes it, it's this makes you want to just get every Conan book and read it all at the same time. It's just so good, and the way you have to see the performance, it's really good to me. It's right up there with Alec Baldwin and um, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Um, that, that, it's not, it's a completely different, two different characters, obviously, and two different, you know, one's menacing and one's not, but it's so good that it reminds you of a, you know, high-class performance. So, again, it's called, um, I believe it's called The Great Wide World. I think I said it right the first time. The Whole Wide World. Is the name of it, and it's it's streaming now. Um, I think I had to pay a dollar ninety nine or something like that for it, but it's worth it. It's worth watching it. Vincent D'Onofrio is really good as Robert E. Howard. So, well, that's it. Um, thank you for joining me on my birthday bash. Um, so I had a party hat on, but you know, there were no party hats. A lot of balloons, decorations. Um, really did it just she really threw me off because I I'm home I'm, I'm retired so I didn't notice any packages coming in or anything like that so she did really good with surprising me with this so really happy I got my stuff I got a lot of stuff to read to listen to Maximilian to assemble and put up on the shelf so I gotta find room um, got a little Maximilian right there from reaction He's sitting right there, so don't know if I have enough room for him up on that shelf or not. But, but anyway, hope everyone has a great weekend. It's very nice here in my neck of the woods. I'm um, just going to listen to music and read and enjoy coffee and cake and enjoy my birthday. So again, you guys take care. Once again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And uh, I'll see you around soon. Take care.